my craziest. I hope they don't see this. Okay. <laughs> this actually happened recently. So my craziest client story is actually a face tattoo story. This girl came into the shop all pissed off and she was like, I need my face tattooed. I'm like, why do you need your face tattooed? She's like, cause my, my ex-boyfriend's name is Phoenix and I need his new girlfriend to know that I'm in business. So I want a Phoenix on my face. I'm, like, I'm, not, not, ta I'm not tattooing your face. I'm not doing a Phoenix on your face. So one time there was a lady, this is when I was working in New Jersey in Flemington, and there was a lady that came in and she asked me, of all people, to tattoo a swastika on her forehead. And I said, you know, I'm not really the right person to ask for that. I don't really feel comfortable doing it. And then she lit a cigarette in our waiting room and cursed me out for like 10 minutes and then finally left. Yo, she's crazy. She went on a she went on a crazy tangent about how she was a descendant of Charles Manson, how she was the original Batwoman, and I was like, it's a cartoon, I don't know what you're saying. It was when I was an apprentice, uh, I was, this girl was getting a lower back tattoo and ended up like passing out, shit herself, and then when she woke up, she like threw up all over the place. I had to clean it up. Yeah, she, I never saw her again, but I don't even think she finished the tattoo. <laughs> I wouldn't. My craziest client story that I can think of right now is, um. I had my buddy's wife get tattooed by me and she got drunk and this was at a convention and she knocked, there is a list of things she did, she knocked her drink over my entire setup, um, she tried to hit me multiple times during the tattoo and fell off the table I think more than once and begged me to finish but then would start swearing at me, yelling at me and it was a nightmare and uh, at one point I was gonna stop, and my uh, buddy, he was like, no, just hold her down, hold her down. And I was like, dude, you can hold her down if you really want me to finish. So he actually did come in, hold her down so that we could finish the tattoo. Well, actually we didn't finish. I had like 10 minutes left. And uh, that's another point where she fell off the table and uh, she's dragging her tattoo on the ground of the convention floor. My worst client story was someone, after tattooing them for two hours, they, flew back home and then wrote out an entire honeymoon itinerary for us to go on together and emailed it to me with all the flight details and times and expenses and all that and made a whole plan for us to go basically on a honeymoon. I politely declined because I was like, I don't even know you, but he didn't get the message and kept asking and asking and you know, then he started talking about how he um, won't have his beard when I see him again because he only grew it out so that when he was walking around New York the cameras wouldn't recognize him through facial recognition and all this crazy stuff and he said he can't come back to the US because of tax evasion and basically he's a criminal. No and he wanted me to pay for the trip too he wasn't even gonna pay for it. Well he was like I can and then when I said no he responded again saying well, you know, if it makes it up for the price of the flights and everything, I will also get a full sleeve and back piece from you while you are on vacation with me. I don't know if it counts as a client story, but in the Chicago convention a few months ago, like this lady came up to me and she was drunk and she flashed me, first of all, for no reason <laughs> and started crying about how she had sausage nipples and that her boyfriend didn't love her. And I don't know this girl. And she was like crying with her titties out. And I was just like, this is just the worst experience of my life. <laughs> like it was the absolute worst thing that's ever happened to me. That's amazing. <laughs> I had two sisters that were getting um, a matching tattoo. You know, one's getting this end of the phrase, the other one's getting the remainder. So the older sister went first and I placed the stencil and asked her to get up and check it out in the mirror. And she, as soon as she looked, she had like a look in her face. So I was like, what's wrong? And she said, the placement's good, but the, the tattoo's backwards. And I was like, what, what do you mean? She's like, the lettering, it's all backwards. And I was like, well, you're looking into it in a mirror, so you know the the letters are going to be backwards, but it's right side. You know, you know that's how a mirror works. And her sister called her stupid and laughed and went over, and she's like, "Oh my God, she's right. It is backwards." So I like, I had to like step out of the room to like 
you know, compose myself. I couldn't believe that this was actually happening, that two people didn't understand how a mirror worked. <laughs> I tattooed a, um, a girl on her ribs, and it was a quote and whatever. And like, I'm really good with clients and like my bedside manner, I feel like. And so she's moving a lot and I'm like, hey, you like really got to stop moving because you're going to mess up your lines. Like you're getting words on you. So she just does not stop moving. Like she's moving purposely. You know, you could tell when someone's moving on purpose and when they're twitching. Like, like you're yeah. getting a tattoo, by the way. Yeah. You might not want yeah. to do She's that. totally moving. We finished it. I did the best I could, you know, fixing it up. And she looks at it in the mirror and she's like, oh, I love it, blah, blah, blah. Took pictures of it. I'm like, okay. So then like an hour later, I get a phone call and it's a girl and she's like, oh, I just got tattooed by you. She's like, oh, I was that girl that wouldn't stop moving. And I was like, oh, okay, so what's up? Yeah, you messed up my tattoo. She went to a friend of mine to get it fixed and she was like talking all this crap about me, saying like, oh yeah, she messed up my tattoo so bad, blah, 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 I need you to fix it. And him being a friend of mine was like, oh, absolutely not. He's like, you must have been moving. She was like, no. He started tattooing her. She was moving all over the place, and he was like, if you don't stop moving, I'm not tattooing you, and you can leave. And she stopped moving, and, and got done. I never saw her again after that, though. Yeah, I have one client. <laughs> it was a nice story, because when he write me email, he said that mm, he can easily pass out. And, and I said, OK, don't worry. We have a situation like that in the, in the shop. Just come and everything will be okay. And he come to the shop, the shop I say just hello, and boom, done. <laughs> and when I start tattooing him, he pass out like every five, 10 minutes. But eventually uh, we do a full sleeve, and in the next session, he just be, was, he was okay. He stopped, passed out like every five, 10 minutes. But it was a pretty fun story. But I'm proud of, the, proud of this guy because he just, you know, he started like that, but finished with full sleep and everything was okay. With him, it was like the situation, it was like, done. You know, because basically when, when you work with the client, you see that something wrong, you know, they, they start scratch, they're so sweaty. He was just like, he talked, 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 and then, boom, done. It was like, express. <laughs> I mean, this guy, he was, he was a real pain, like he was a real, um, he didn't want to spend a lot of money, so he would come in like a couple times a week to try to get me at my cheapest price. I'm like, dude, like the minimum, like I can't, like I don't know what you want from me. So then he ended up just getting like a name on his wrist. And so like he honestly wasn't even like that bad, it was his friend who he brought with him, who like in the back of, in the back of the shop I work at, we have this, it's, a wall of wallpaper, and it's um, it's got like statues, and it looks very 3D. It's 3D wallpaper. It's a Bernini statue. It's a Bernini statue, it's yeah, sick. and it's it's really great. And a lot of people think that it's actual little statue until you get close to it and you realize that it's wallpaper. So his friend thought this was the, the sickest shit he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Like I'm glad you like it. I'm really happy. So we had like a piece of furniture in front of it. And as I'm tattooing, this guy is like sliding furniture across the shop and taking selfies in front of the in front of the wall and I'm like are you kidding me right now like can you not I don't know rearrange the entire shop while I'm trying to tattoo your buddy over here who's like mouth breathing spit particles on me while I'm trying to tattoo his stupid wrist like <laughs> stupid wrist <laughs> and he's like I see him and he's taking selfies and he's like can you come take a picture of me I'm like I'm in the middle of something like I'm gloved like I don't know what I'm, <laughs> Sir, I'm a little bit busy right now I, I'm just maybe uh, late if you stay there <laughs> and don't move I'll do it I'll do it in a second and I did like I literally did at the end once I finished I was like I'll take your, your selfie take for your you. stupid picture I'll take your stupid picture and can you put the furniture back like it's not it's there for a reason oh, not for you gonna to be angry yeah I was there by myself and I was like what so uh, at the Philadelphia Tattoo Convention last year, me and two of my buddies decided we're gonna do a three-way collaboration on a guy. First it started like, we're gonna do one large piece all together, figured out, and then it turned into Eulis, of course, being a crazy person going, hey, let's do a whole sleeve. And we get to the first day, and the kid is throwing up on himself, passing out. It's terrible, it's like six hours into this tattoo, so we're like, oh, fuck, now we have to tattoo this kid for two more days and try to get this thing done. Third day, he shows up, and he looks like he's dying, like the pale white, dumping sweat. His arm looks like a hot dog you put in the microwave, just like bleh. And uh, we're like, are you sure you want to go ahead with this man? Like, you know, it's, we can finish it up another time. And his exact quote was, mama didn't raise no bitch. And then about, I don't know, probably 
10, 15 minutes into tattooing him, the kid just like starts spasming out. He's like shaking. So I'm freaking out because I never had this happen before. And I'm running around trying to find an EMT. Keep in mind, it's the world's largest tattoo convention and there's one EMT there. And I was gone for like 30 minutes and then finally came back. And by the time I got back, he was pretty much fine. And they had like stabilized him. He just blood sugar dropped, but I had never panicked. And also learned to never try to tattoo somebody three days in a row. He came in and he spoke to like our, our desk manager girl first. And she came to me and then she tells me, this guy wants to get a dick tattoo. And I, at first I was wondering if she meant he wanted to get a tattoo of a penis or like a tattoo on his penis. And no, yeah, it ended up being on. It's snake scales wrapping around, you know, like a anacocta, a lot of people like to call it. <laughs> and he wanted photorealism, he wanted full color, like just too much, man. It's too much time to be down there. Um, but he was very like, it was a little strange, to be honest. He was very shy. He didn't say much at all, just what he wanted, and then that's it, and he just took it. It was There was a lot of awkward maneuvering to stretch. I was just going to say, what it were was you, like, like, pulling on the tip nah, of it? It was, like, <laughs> kind of like a snake. Like, imagine a snake, you know, trying okay. to stretch that skin. You kind of have literally have to have it in half. Pretty much. You were bending it in half? Kind of, but like around fingers, you know? So I, ha oh my. I have a grip still. <laughs> I guess I should tell the ketamine story, right? Okay, so this was maybe a month ago. I was tattooing with a regular client of mine. Um, let's call him Mo. And I was tattooing his arm. You know, we just finished the outline. It was a pretty large piece. And so um, we took a break just to like reset up with some color or whatever. He went to the bathroom, he came back. Um, so I started on the inside of his arm. I started shading in some of the leaves. It was like a floral piece. Um, and he's, his arm just kept moving forward. And so I was like, hey, Mo, you know, you gotta move your arm back. You gotta keep your arm straight. And he was like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then it would just keep going forward. So then I look at his face and he's just not all there. So I'm like, okay, you know, it's a pretty tough spot. Maybe he's like passing out. So I go through the whole pass out routine because it happens. It happens more often than people think. Um, so, you know, you give him the water, the glucose tablet, you know, put some water on his forehead, whatever. And he really wasn't responding to any of it for about 10 minutes. And then I started panicking because at 10 minutes, you should be coming back to. So I called 911 and we had an EMT come and they couldn't get a read on his blood pressure. Everything was crazy. And then I decided since it was a regular client of mine that I would go into the ambulance with him. And so we climb in the ambulance. He's still really like foggy, not really responding correctly to anything. So at this point, I'm like, this dude's having a stroke. Like he's gonna die. Like I killed a man. And so we go to the hospital and finally all the police are gone or whatever. And they hook him up on an EKG. Everything came back normal. And then he finally starts coming to and he goes, oh my God. And I was like, what? And he's like, I was in a crazy K-hole. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, I went to the bathroom and I did two giant rails of ketamine. And I was like, are you fucking, I thought you were dying. Like, I thought you were literally dying. It turns out, yeah, he was in a K-hole for about 45 minutes. Oh no, I have to. Right out of my apprenticeship. I'm alone in the shop. I'm finishing a tattoo on a girl. Everything's going great. Tattoo looks great. I'm ready, I'm doing this thing, I'm ready to clean her up. She passes out. We have like oh. a tiny bit left to go. Passes out, trying to wake her up, whatever, smelling salt. She gets up, but she's still like super woozy, throws up. I'm trying to give her some soda, drinks some soda, throws up again. She's like, so I, I get her, she's fine. Her friend is like, excuse me, I need to talk to you. I'm like, okay. So her friend pulls me outside of the shop and she asks me, could this be because she got an abortion? So I looked directly at her friend and I screamed at the top of my lungs. I was like, today? And she's like, oh no, it's like four or five months ago. I'm like, no. And I went right back into the shop and I was like, what just happened? Like, it was my first time like alone in the shop ever, right after my apprenticeship. I was like, I almost shit myself. You know, like, like, you know how shocking you have to be to make an adult shit themselves? <laughs> that was insane. The second one is not the worst. I was tattooing above a penis, like on the, the pubic mound, you might call it. <laughs> Everything was fine. 
penis was not exposed. Hand, gloved, obviously, against the base of the penis. I'm tattooing, I'm, I'm looking at the tattoo. I'm not looking at the penis. And I feel, I'm thinking my client is pushing my hand away because I'm feeling something hard on the back of my hand. So I'm like, what the fuck? And then I looked and I was like, there's a penis on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't sing out loud but in my head. Like, I am singing about a penis on my hand. I'm like, what do I do in this situation? <laughs> so I'm just trying to sing through it. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I turn around, I'm like cleaning the tattoo up. I'm not looking at the penis, but it's like, you know, when they're like this a little, you know what I'm saying? When they're like in the mood. I looked back at it and there was a wet spot on the boxers. I was like, holy shit, what do I do? I just ignored it. I was like, let's, let's finish this tattoo. We're this far, you know what I mean? I'm gonna finish, you already did. Let's do this thing. <laughs>